45,000 years ago because after this time we don't see them anymore. They're just gone. Now, getting back to the trick with the hair and the bleach, we are so successful. And now look at the symbol again. I'm switching from the mitochondria to the nuclear genome that we ask, can we also sequence the nuclear genome? And we were so successful that 90% of the DNA that we sequenced and that we extracted from the hair was true nuclear DNA from mammals coming from the chromosomes. And this, of course, has an important uh, impact because only this way those um, projects become economically feasible. It was incredibly expensive to sequence the Neanderthal genome because the Neanderthal only from bone you get one or two percent Neanderthal DNA and 98 percent of what you sequence is something else. So using again the chromosomes because people would very quickly come in and say oh whatever you find on the mitochondria is freak accident of evolution but it does not hold up in the, in the nuclear DNA. But after we sequenced the complete um, genome and that was published in 2008 we could show that these two plates of mammoths split in one, uh, 1 1.5 million years. And people were battling us and were saying, we don't trust you that these are two groups. And if you just now compare this with the two uh, humanoid groups, the humans and the Neanderthals, they are only separated by 0.5 to 0.6 million years. And this is why I always say, if you don't want to be called a Neanderthal, you should grant mammals to be two separate subspecies of these. At the same time, it is very interesting that this six to seven million years is the time frame in which all this radiation occurred, not only for this uh, two groups of animals, but for many others as well. And I close here on the mammoths. And if you're interested in finding out more, also art and stuff, we have a, a mammoth web page that you might want to visit. So um, what can we learn from mammoths? And actually, you would not uh, believe what we've done. Um, Feng Xing has done another very nice analysis, for example, on repeat elements. And he could show that the mammoths had a completely different set of genetic elements that, for example, the Indian or the African elephant. Uh, Megan with Daniel Huyson was, in Vickle, uh, was uh, developed only from uh, the work that we've done on the mammoths. So a lot of good stuff has come from it. And so now we try to apply this to uh, the group, endangered group of the polar bears. They are iconic for um, endangered species. They are iconic for the climate change. And there is a huge political implications I will tell you about in a moment. And this cliff here on the shores of uh, a small island out of uh, the archipelago of Svalbard. If you've seen the movie The Golden Compass and the uh, kingdom of the polar bears, this is where it is. It's here on the north east side of uh, Greenland. And in this cliff, by using a geological record, they could show that this jawbone is 110 to 130,000 years old. And this is very important because with carbon dating, like with the hair, you can only date until 65,000 years. And here's again what we learned. We take the extinct cave bear sequences. This group here are the brown bears and the grizzlies. And there's a very small group of bears called ABC bears from an island in Alaska here. And if you look on the, on, on the pole from the top, you can see that a lot of those distances are not very far for migrating bears. And the point that I'm trying to make here is if you compare the polar bears, you can see very small diversity in the polar bears, but they share alleles with that ancient bear, and this ancient bear also shares alleles with this group of ABC brown bears. And that way, we could solve the speciation of the polar bear because people always believe the polar bear has arisen from the Kodiak brown bears, but he hasn't. It actually come only from the group of ABC brown bears in southern Alaska. And in case, I don't know, this is not so much an issue here in this country, but where I'm from in central Pennsylvania, not everybody agrees that there is evolution. 
and also the criti uh, criticism is you can never prove it because there are no transition state fossils and now look at this one this is our ancient bear which sits exactly in the bifurcation of this two has a very short branch length and so if you ever need to have claim on or proof that there are transition state fossils the polypintin specimen certainly is the one again using the humans as the, um, the reference here you can see that as with the mammoths over this uh, time frame of six million years then the bear evolution is on a much, much uh, shorter scale. And I think this is the fascination here that we can really see on how short we say that the polar bear probably is not much older, at least from only looking at the mitochondrial, the maternal marker, it's only like 150,000 years ago. And this figure now is what got us really into trouble and made it almost impossible for us to sequence that is that when we uh, send our finding to the journals, uh, climate researchers got this into their hands and they said, uh, avoid at all costs. And the reason is, if you look at the thermal profile of the planet, so the yellow ones are the warming periods and the blue ones are the cooling periods. So this is this pattern of ice ages that have come in succession over the last, um, this is 650,000 years, you can see that the mo uh, modern polar bear has only arisen here in this uh, intercooling from uh, before the last uh, ice age. The polypintin bear before this um, wrist uh, worm interglacial period and the split from the brown bears was here. So this is the time, the orange here, is the time in which those polar bear, the ancient polar bear existed and the devastating news to the climate researchers was it lived through a warming period and nothing happened. And of course you cannot automatically infer from that that the polar bear is going to survive again. But our data says it has done so once before. Moving on, sequencing the Tasmanian devil. This is a very uh, fascinating story because uh, we already heard that the Tasmanian tiger went extinct and the uh, reason that uh, this two, these are the largest marsupial carnivores, so the Tasmanian tiger has been and this role is now taken by the Tasmanian uh, devil and about 45,000 years ago the first humans made it over uh, from Papua New Guinea, uh, from mainland in Asia into uh, Australia and very likely they brought with them um, domesticated dogs that became feral again after the journey. They said goodbye to their masters and set off on their own and they became the dingoes and then pretty much the dingoes um, eradicated uh, these uh, carnivores, marsupials. But even in the 1300 years ago in this corner of Australia in mainland you would still find them. Then in about 1800 the European settlers arrived they hunted the devil, psilocin went extinct, and then uh, they thought they were smart enough to protect the devil in 1941. And then in 1996, this picture was taken by a tourist. And first people thought this was a freak accident or was an injury, but this was not, nothing very serious. And then very shortly after it was recognized that this was an infectious cancer and it was spreading through the population like a wildfire. And as we speak, by just from 1996 to 2006, 60% of the population has been lost. And so there were 100,000 animals and now there are 40,000 left. And I will tell you in a moment here in this slide that in 1996, by building a short fence, the disease could have been contained. But this is the big problem with cons uh, conservation biology that people talk, 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 and they don't act, and they're way too slow. And so this is the first case where we can clearly show it will be entirely our fault if the species go extinct just because we have not done the right thing at the right time. And so in 2003, this is where the disease was 2007, and last week they have found the last remaining population to be infected in the Northwest where everybody always thought they were.